In this demonstration, I'll go through and show you how you can start managing other servers through here. In this case, adding additional roles and features into other servers across the network. So what I've done behind the scenes is added another server in and joined the domain. But in this case, the server that I've added in is actually a Windows Server Core Edition. And after installing Core Edition, I've realized that I actually wanted to make that a full Windows Server 2012 R2 uh, full GUI type install. So what I can do is if I jump in here and we take a look at this machine, okay, you can take a look as soon as I log in, I'll just enter my credentials. And for those of you familiar with Core, this is the type of thing you've seen before, that it's effectively just a command line um, interface. We can jump in and start using the core or the server core configuration tool just sconfig and with that you can see I have done a small amount of configuration I've joined the domain I've given the computer a name um, but you know it's not a GUI we don't have any of the the GUI tools that we're used to so I can close that and effectively I don't need to go in and run any command lines uh, to go through and you know I don't need to use PowerShell I don't need to use DISM to install the the GUI tools which which are options but because I've got the server joined to the domain what I can do is just jump back into server manager I'll add that server into the list of servers that I want to manage so here we've got core OEM and I'll hit OK and what we can start doing once we've added it in there, you'll notice first of all that it, it didn't expand out any of the options because it's just a very basic installation. There's not a lot of services, there's not a large um, attack surface there. So let's go in now and we'll choose add roles and features. Whereas we're all used to the idea of adding roles and features to the server that we're actually using, uh, but we don't really think about it in terms of being able to remotely add roles to other servers. But that again is one of those uh, features that was introduced with server 2012 and uh, he's also in 2012 R2. So in this case, I want to select the role-based or feature-based installation. I want to select Core OEM as the server, but you can see here that pretty much any server that I add in here is going to be available. In this case, it's not a server role that I want to add, but here though, you can see that it's, you know, if I wanted to add IIS, WDS, the Essentials Experience, etc., these are all things that I could add quite easily through here. But in this case, what I want to add in is actually a feature, or some, a couple of features actually, and it's the user interfaces and infrastructure. And we've got three options here. So the graphical management tools and infrastructure, all this does is really install the server admin tools um, and the, the necessary infrastructure for you to be able to actually utilize those. So if there are any dependencies on any other uh, Windows components, they will also get uh, selected and installed here for you. Now the other one that I can choose here, uh, just for the sake of server management, is if I decide that I actually want full-blown um, uh, the Windows UI where I want File Explorer, I want Internet Explorer, etc., then this option will give me those additional capabilities. Now, if I select that third one, I'm not going to really be choosing that on a server that's being used for management purposes um, or just a, a general purpose server. Because what this is, is really, you know, when we install the desktop experience, what we're really doing is effectively yeah, saying that this is a, term, a server that I'm effectively going to be setting up as a, a terminal server, for example, uh, or a remote desktop server. And that's not really what I want to do in this case. So I'll actually make sure that that option is not selected. So. If there are other things that I do need to install, I can pick and choose, and you can see here that it's an extensive list of things that I can go through and add. And what I can do now is just click on Next, and it gives me a reminder up here, do we need to specify an alternate path? So if I take a look in here, specify an alternate source path, I can point to directly to a folder that that uh, machine may have. I can point to a network share. I can point directly to a WIM file uh, where it can pull that, pull that information out of. So we've got a couple of different ways of uh, specifying where it can get that information from. The other option is that it can pull that information down from Windows Update. But obviously we need to think about not just the bandwidth requirements because the files or features that it's bringing down may be small, but it's just one of those things that is going to add a bit more time to that process. So with that, I'll just hit cancel. We don't need to make any changes there. I'll just click install. And effectively, once that's running, all I need to do is just let that run through. And that means that we're effectively going to have that server core installation updated and have a new UI applied to it. 
So that's it for that demonstration. Just a very quick look at how we can start using Server Manager to add roles and features into other servers on the network. And these can be physical servers or virtual servers, or we could even do that, use that feature to inject these capabilities into VHDs that we've already got created.